No matter where you go in Pakistan, the shopping plaza, the airport, the shrine, you will find beggars by the dozens. What is common among beggars in all parts of Pakistan, urban and rural areas alike, is their pursuit of money. What separates the beggars is the root of their pursuit. In many cases, beggars are genuinely poor families who have no means to earn income other than begging. With a lack of education, substandard housing, no facilities to clean water, clean health, or regular medicine, begging is the last resort of survival. At the same time, many beggars are simply fronts for organized crimes. Children are often kidnapped, harassed, and punished, including physical mutilation, and coerced to beg on behalf of organized gangs. In many cases, the children have to give a percentage of their day's earnings to their gang leaders or tekedars. The small percentage of beggars who are arrested are often released back onto the street. Even though begging is a crime in Pakistani law, there are so many beggars that there is no way they can all be arrested. Similarly, because there are so many, there is no social welfare system, whether provided by the government or a private charity like the Eidi Foundation, which can support so many people. The question of the government's responsibility is a good one. An honest assessment of Pakistan's government reveals that there are many higher priorities than taking care of its people. While the problem of taking care of Pakistan's people, including adequate shelter, food, clothing, has existed since Pakistan was born, there seems to be no focus by the government on providing adequate social welfare to those in need. So if the government cannot provide, what about the general public? What is our role? On one hand, there's the compassionate view that the beggars need our help. Someone less fortunate needs food, needs money. Out of our kindness and compassion, we contribute. This feeds the other side of the coin, where now, by contributing to the beggar's lifestyle, the begging and the poverty are being enabled and perpetuated. The question is how to break the beggar free from his or her lifestyle. Education, health, jobs, these are all simple answers. But for the beggar and his or her family, how are they willing to sacrifice today's dinner for their child's long-term future? While a social welfare system that would include 
job education and training for adults as well as health and education for children would be a blessing for many of these beggars that alone is not the solution.